Hey, it's Mountain Ghost 556. I brought somebody on board to demonstrate my opinion on the bug out get home bag. And this is my buddy Torso. I asked him, look, man, I need your help. I know despite your limitations, you have cinder blocks for feet because you're cut off at the knees. You have no arms. And unfortunately, you have a neck for a head. He literally just said, yes, I'll star in your crappy YouTube videos. I want to go big time. I said, that's fine. No problem. You know, the least you could do for me is star in these because I put a roof over your neck. So he's going to be demonstrating my point, at least my opinion, why I think that tactical bags are not the best option for bugging out, getting home, and various other things, maybe even EDC. A lot of people like to carry these bags as EDC. Well, I'm not a big fan of it. I did carry this bag a while for EDC up until I got another bag, and I'm, I'm, I'm comfortable with my decision in that. So let's start off. Everybody watches movies. Uh, they watch all kinds of war flicks, all this other stuff. They're familiar. Just by associating yourself with the movies, they're familiar with tactical gear. They're familiar, they're familiar with warfighter gear. And so there's certain things that set that out from other types of gear. And one of those is your all too familiar molly webbing. Now, some civilian backpacks and other types of uh, bags and stuff have molly webbing on it. But the military tends to have more molly webbing because it's more modular. So right off the bat, if you're in the know, you're a prepper, you're a survivalist, you're any of those type, ex-military, and just from the front profile, I want everybody to look at just from the front profile, you see the molly webbing. And if you're really astute and you're very observant, you'll also notice right here, let's scoot torso over this way, this is a quick attach. Civilian backpacks do not have that. And one of the main features, and I, I failed to mention that on my video uh, concerning the Rush 511 or other types of military backpacks, is they're quick detached for a reason. Drop your load get into the fight, and fight light. That is a sign that this backpack is meant to be combat operational, dropped, just like any other backpack that you would have in the military situation. You necessarily don't want to fight in it. So if you have to abandon it or it drags you down, you take it out because you're in that type of environment where it could snag automatically. So you have the quick release here. You have a chest strap. That's synonymous with civilian backpacks too. But the molly webbing is a dead giveaway that this is a tactical backpack. You see tactical backpack, you're going to think to yourself, okay, well, this person may have some training, may not, or they just want to play Rambo. You know, they could be a mall ninja, or they could be Delta Force. You don't know. But that steps up your awareness. That steps up the fact that this person wearing this particular type of gear may or may not have training. So instead of just looking like a normal person or a regular civilian, you bring up the person's, the adversary, you bring up their threat level a little higher than you would if you were just wearing a regular pack. So even from the front view, if you're looking at it, the color, which the 511 basically says this is their sandstone color. I really like this color. It's a good color. You know, it's sandstone. You have, you know, the foliage green. You have the uh, other types. And then camouflage is a dead giveaway. If you're going to use one of these packs, just go ahead and use a, a solid color. Don't use camouflage. That right there just it basically says, well, that's the end of it. Well, okay, this guy's totally Rambo. So just even from the front profile, you can see that if you're aware and you can study and you're observant, this is a tactical backpack. Steps up your threat awareness. This person might possibly have some type of tactical, mental, or physical advantage over me. That's not always the case, but... It could be that. So you're automatically stepping up your threat awareness by just even profiling this type of shoulder straps with the molly webbing. So I've shown you the front profile of an ordinary tactical backpack. Now I'm going to show you the front profile of this Kelty Red Wing. I think right now you can see the complete difference. It doesn't have the molly webbing on it. It doesn't have that color. It looks more civilianish, less width and stuff like that. The color 
is grays and blacks. It totally blends in a little bit more and doesn't give you that sense that, okay, this guy is getting ready to, you know, go full Rambo, or he could be a threat because, hey, tactical guys like to have tactical cool stuff, and so there you go. There is a drawback to actually being like the gray man. You could actually be an easy target because they could look at you and say, okay, this guy's an easy target. He's just a hiker backpacker. He's a soy latte guy. He, you know, one of those guys, you know, granola bar guys. That's fine. If they do approach you, then you do what you got to do to handle business. And that's that. But as you can see right there, this is a completely low-profile, different type of system. I don't need to say much more other than that's why I like it. It's not standing out. The first initial approach, you don't have all that molly webbing. It's not screaming tactical. It's not screaming, I got Sportsman's Warehouse in the back of my back. So if you look at it, I want that to sink in. It, it does. You can actually tell. There's a total different contrast between the two packs just in the front profile on the straps. So, this is torso side profile. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to admit I just looked through the camera. That's actually kind of creepy looking, especially with the backdrop. I'm not naming any organizations in far off lands that this kind of kind of looks like, but I'm just saying that's not what this is about. So, you got the profile, the side profile of this particular pack. You can see that it has a lot of bulge to it, for lack of a better word. You can also tell from the side. If so if I was off in a distance and I saw this, you, enough said, really. I mean, you got all the webbing, you got all this cool tactical stuff. You're really kind of putting yourself out there with this particular pack. Now, I know this isn't a this is just an analog. And it's not sitting the way a pack would, but if you look at it, right here is the neck. And here would be your risers. And the risers on a civilian backpack would pull it up to where it would sit a little higher on it. You've got the profile looks tactical. The color's tactical. The modular assessment attachery points are tactical. Everything just says tactical. That draws a lot of attention, especially if you're using this as an EDC bag. Come on, walking through the mall, which if anybody goes to malls anymore, I don't know. I guess that just shows my age. Walking in public or doing anything, it just, it, it's, it's not an EDC pack either. I, do, I just think that this serves the purpose of a direct action, combat action pack. So you look at it and just see. There it is, you know. You're looking good, Torso. You're looking good. You can look at it. It's, it's big. It's heavy. It's designed for combat. That's what it's designed for. It's not designed for hiking in the mountains. It's not designed for any of that other stuff. It is a big pack. I'm doing this so you can see it versus just seeing it on a table, okay? As you can see, there's a complete difference in the two bags. And... This is what I'm talking about. It's more streamlined. It doesn't have that bulge and girth. This carries about as... I think it carries a little bit more, but it's more contoured to the body. It doesn't stick out. One of the things that you really want to look for in any type of backpack, whether you're using this for SHTF or, camp or hiking or backpacking, is good suspension system. Now... Why I say that is right here on your traps, I do believe those are your traps, this bag is pulling onto it, causing pressure to push down on your traps. Your, I think the average head weighs about 8 pounds. Well, that's a lot for the neck. When you have your traps being compressed, you start to get a cascading effect down to your lats and then your hips and stuff like that. And then that's almost game over for the entire thing. Your back sore, your neck sore, your neck starts to get cramps. So when you do that, and if you saw in the other instance video where I had it on the same profile, that bag hang, hang really low, and it pulled on your, your traps. So what you do is you pull your risers up, and then your suspension system is pushing into your pectoral muscles 
and then you get a streamlined effect where it's put on your hips, it's put on here, but it's not put on your neck muscles. That's very important because for the people that love to carry tons of gear in their bags, especially these tactical bags that don't have good suspension systems, you really, really need to keep the weight off of your shoulders. And that's what this does. You can see it's streamlined. It contours the body. It doesn't have that overall look. And at a distance, you may not even be able to tell if somebody's wearing a backpack. That's one of the good aspects of it. The, the overall glaring thing about this bag is it doesn't scream tactical. It doesn't scream, hey, look at me. I'm Joe Cool. I'm going to take on the world. It's a simple setup. It gets you from where you need to go. And one of the things that I want to say, too, is a lot of people carry that 511-style backpack, and they use it for a bug out or a get home. This carries a little bit more, has just enough, has just as much space in it, but it's contoured to the body, and it's absolutely more comfortable. Hands down, more comfortable. So... That's why I'm suggesting these packs. You don't have to go tactical unless you want to impress people and be kind of like one of those guys that are out there or gals that are out there. And I'm, I've got this big pack on. I'd rather be comfortable, discreet, and get to where I'm going without having to get into a scuffle with people any day of the week. So that's what I want you to look at. Take a look at that. And as you think about it, maybe you want to replan your bug out, get home strategy with a little less scream screaming tactical so here we are we're looking directly at this at torso six there you go once again total tactical all this screams a hey, tactical it, it, it pulls you out of the crowd instead of blending you in the crowd you can also tell right here you got a lot of pull on your shoulders right here and this is this isn't light and like I said this is basically my base gear for operations and stuff in the field not bugging out or coming home and whatever situation in the STHF world you fantasize about I don't use this bag and I won't use this bag unless it's my last resort so you can tell you have all the cool features that make it what it is as a combat bag that also stands out like I'm not I'm not saying that this is the wrong choice for anybody. I'm saying this is just not the best choice to use if you want to be low key and comfortable. So for those that you do use this bag, I'm going to keep saying this. I'm not trying to start a huge uh, debate. I'm just saying, as you've seen the different side profiles, front, back, side, you can make up your mind on your own. It's a simple. What's your preference kind of decision? So here we go. This is the back profile of the Kelty Red Wing. You can see it's nondescript. It hugs. It has better suspension for the shoulders and traps. It's contoured. Just all around doesn't draw a lot of attention. I know I have this first day up here, but I can easily take that off. Like I said in the previous video about this, blacken that up, blacken that up, take your first aid off. Even take off the carabiner if you want. Definitely take off the shinies. But I do use this for going out into the wilderness, the desert. And if I get hurt, I like to know people, the first thing they can get into is my first aid kit. Just like I have on my 511, I've got a my NKDA and my blood type with a symbol there denoting that's first aid. You can tell there's a glaring difference between the two packs. This is my opinion and if you guys think that I'm fundamentally wrong, I more than wholeheartedly respect that. I just think that there's a difference between carrying a pack that draws attention and carrying a pack that doesn't draw so much attention. Take a look at it, let it absorb. So now, one of the other things I had mentioned in the earlier video series, a lot of these preppers and survivalists love to hang about everything you can possibly hang off your backpack. So I wanted to give you the back profile of this particular pack with a little 
some doodads and some accessories sticking off there. And to be honest, I didn't really affix these real well. I fixed them on there just to uh, demonstrate that look at that. Now it's a totally different looking backpack. <laughs> it's absolutely tremendously different. It has gear hanging off of it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you two side profiles. And tell me, if you saw somebody wearing this pack, it wouldn't raise suspicions that they would have some really good stuff in there. So right here, you got some rope. That just adds to the whole overall effect of, I really want what's in that pack. Now, like I said, to be honest, I didn't do the rope up and coil it really well. I just stuck it on there for the effect. But even if I had secured it and made it pretty, it still is going to look like that. So you have the rope there. You, you just keep getting better and better as the more stuff you affix to your pack. I'm going to give you the other side profile and really show you something that if I was in real need or I was desperate to get some kind of tools, that, that pack is exactly what I'm going for. There you go. That's my Ontario Knife Company RTAC 2 hanging out there, plain view for the world to see. Now, don't think that this is like something that only an amateur would do. I have seen lots and lots of survivalists and preppers that say they're seasoned and everything from surviving the internals of a volcano to an apocalypse I apparently slept through. Look at that. If I am hiking down the road and people are desperate, they're going to fixate on that particular tool. They're not going to go, oh man, you know, he's, he's got that knife. It's dangerous. He's dangerous. No, it's, it doesn't work like that. They're going to say, I want that knife. They're going to gather up five or six people. They're going to come and take it from you. Now, if you're Billy Badass and you've got your AR and you've, you've had your energy drink and you've been doing cardio for the last six months and you can go from cover to cover and your marksmanship is awesome, maybe you can take them on. But the reality is you're going to be tired. You're probably going to be scared. You're probably trying to figure out what's going to happen next. And it's just going to be a world of hurt. That is a true signal right here that they're going to take your stuff if they see that. I'm not ragging on anybody. I'm going to keep saying this because I know some people go, you're a know-it-all. No. <laughs> That's a glaring observation right there that this pack gets even more tactical looking, more advanced in all the goodies that are inside of it, and it's going to draw attention. On a long enough timeline, you're going to get hit if you show yourself out to these desperate people. So just keep that in mind when you're looking at this particular stuff, that this is what they're seeing right here. This is what people are seeing that are desperate, scared, and hungry. This is what you're portraying when you go out and you're wearing all this tactical stuff. So there you are. That's the back profile of that Kelty. Doesn't look like much has changed, does it? You know, doesn't look tactical, doesn't have all that. It just basically looks like the same backpack. Well, I'm going to show you. It has the same stuff on it that the Rush 511 does, just a little bit more concealed. So there you are. That was the side that the rope was on on the 511. Now I'm going to zoom in for you so you can probably see it a little bit better. Let me get that right there. There you go. To let you know, I put the rope in there. I'm going to zoom back out. And I'll pull the rope out so you not saying I'm playing any tricks, but you don't see that rope hanging down. You don't even know it's there. So to be honest, here's the rope that was hanging off the 511 on the outside of it. It's concealed. You have sleeve pockets. This is for particular types of climbing gear and things like that. You have sleeve pockets where you can conceal certain objects and items. Totally innocuous. You don't see, you don't see all the, the tactical stuff hanging off of it. It's concealed. You don't look like you have a lot. You're under the radar. I'm going to go to the next side where that monstrosity of a knife was hanging off the 511. There it is. That's the side where that dragon slaying monster was hanging off. Innocuous, don't see it. You can zoom in a little bit. There you go. You can see just the handle sticking out. Unless you're a hardcore observer 
or you're really looking for something, you're not going to see this thing hanging out, kicking it. You're just going to look like a regular backpacker. So I'm going to pull it out to let you see that I actually have it in there in that type of gear slot. And there it is. That's in there. No one knows that I have this knife, unless they're really looking, and they probably don't get the entire length of it. You know, this is a this is a monster, and I really like this knife myself. It's a monster, but they don't know you have it. And it's definitely not a fighting knife. It's a utility knife. But in an STHF situation, anything of value makes you a target, especially when it's out in the open for somebody to easily get. Okay, so this is me and Torso giving you comparisons, real-time comparisons on the two packs and my explanation why I don't think that the tactical backpack is suitable for survival type situations and I'm not going to say survival, because if you're up in the mountain, you're not going to run into a lot of people. But primary for bug out and get home bags, I think this is a more superior choice. If you don't, that's cool. But I'm going to stick with what works for me, and you stick with what works for you. So everybody say goodbye to Torso. And this is going to be the end of this cringy, mind-grinding video series. Thank you for watching. Mountain Ghost 556, out.